What is that? Oh. In the distance. Oh my god, look at that. Oh, that's so pretty. Bye. Oh, that was so well done. Whoo, that was cool. <laughs> I'm not getting you one of those things, Eldridge. Spoilers, remember? You can't have one. Where are they? I don't see them. There they are! Okay, okay, okay. Okay. All right. Whew. Yeah, I know their name is Eldridge. They still can't have one of those things. Not in this house. <laughs> All right. Not only would it not fit, but I just feel like it just not go with the general decor. Right, I'm gonna try something here. What? That's not grenades now. What's my granadas? Key bindings. Shoot a melee use fist throw grenade G. Okay. Well, that didn't do anything. I'll have to turn notifications off. Dear Angel, stop playing. Why would he stop? Why would you stop? Ooh. Okay. All right. 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 That I am taking. Hang on. I gotta adjust that. So, um, I am going to add the bullets to my snipper ritual. What do we have here? Greater active rounds, phasic rounds. Phasic rounds are for shields. Armor piercing and anti-personnel. So we're going to do armor piercing. Very nice. Um, and that's it. That's all we'll worry about for now. Nihilus, buddy. Something's moving over behind those crates. Wait! Don't don't shoot! I'm one of you! I'm human! Oh, I missed another conversation. Whoops. Sneaking up on us like that nearly got you killed. I am sorry, I was hiding from those creatures. My name's Pal. I saw what happened to that Turian. The other one shot him. I need to know how Nihilus died. The other one got here first. He was waiting when your friend showed up. He, he called him Saren. I, I think they knew each other. Your friend seemed to relax. He let his guard down. And Saren killed him. Shot him right in the back. I'm just lucky he didn't see me behind the crates. We were told a Prothean beacon was brought to the spaceport. What happened to it? 
It's over on the other platform, probably where that guy Saren was headed. He hopped on the cargo train right after he killed your friend. I knew that beacon was in trouble. Everything's gone to hell since we found it. First that damn mothership showed up, then the attack. They killed everyone. Everyone. If I hadn't been behind the crates, I'd be dead too. How come you're the only one who survived? Why didn't anyone else try to hide behind the crates? They never had a chance. I... I... I was already behind the crates when the attack started. Wait a minute. You were hiding behind the crates before the attack? I... Sometimes I need a nap to get through my shift. I... I sneak off behind the crates to grab 40 winks where the supervisor can't find me. You survived because you're lazy? Eh. It saved his life. Might as well acknowledge it. If you hadn't snuck off for that nap, you'd probably be dead just like all the others. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I don't really want to think about it. Tell me about the Geth attack. It was quick. One minute that ship was descending, the next. Those Geth were swarming over the platform. Thousands of them. They must have been inside that mothership. They shot anything that moved. It was a massacre. Is there anything else you can tell me about the beacon? They brought it here this morning. We loaded it up onto the train and shipped it to the other platform. Hard to believe that was only a few hours ago. Feels like a whole other life. Tell me about this mothership you saw. I I've never seen anything like it before. It... It was huge. Landed over near that platform. The whole place got dark as it came down. And... It was making this noise, this... This sound that bored right into your brain. That's what woke me up. The attack came a few minutes later. We need to find that beacon before it's too late. Take the cargo train. That's where the other Turian went. I, I, I can't stay here. I need to get away from all this. So, I forgot a conversation. But that's fine. <clears throat> that's my own fault. I won't go back and uh, reload or anything. But I'm going to go get this conversation. But if I did that conversation or this conversation... Whoa, what are we shooting at? Oh, guys. Guys. We can deal with them later. Or we can deal with them now. I see you. Gotcha. Um, I could have gotten something from him. But that's fine. Gotcha. Everybody stay calm out there. We're coming out. We're not armed. Is it safe? Are they gone? You're okay now. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Those things were crawling all around the shed. They would have found us for sure. We owe you our lives. Uh, I still can't believe it. When we saw that ship, I thought it was all over. It showed up right before the attack. I knew it was trouble the second I saw it. So we made a break for the sheds. Tell me everything you remember about the attack. The three of us were working the crops when that ship showed up. We just saw it and ran. I don't know what happened to the rest of the crew. They were by the garage, over near the spaceport, right where that ship came down. No way they survived. You don't know that. We survived. If they made it to the garage, they could have had a fighting chance. Do you know anything about the Prothean beacon they dug up? We're just farmers. We heard they found something out there, but it never really mattered to us. Not until now. What else can you tell me about the ship you saw? I was too busy running to get a clear look at it. I think it landed over near the spaceport. Tell them about the noise, Cole. That awful noise. It was emitting some kind of signal as it descended. Ooh. It sounded like the shriek of the damned. Only, it was coming from inside your own head. It was probably trying to block communications. Whatever it was, it felt like it was tearing right through my skull. Almost made it impossible to think. I have to go. Hey, Cole, we're just a bunch of farmers. These guys are soldiers. Maybe we should give them the stuff. Jeez, Blake, you've got to learn when to shut up. If there's something you're not telling me... Some guys at the spaceport were running a small smuggling ring. Nothing major. They 
exchange for a cut of the profits, we let them store packages in our sheds. What kind of packages? I found a pistol. Figured it would come in handy if those things came back. But you'll probably get more use out of it than we will. We're risking our lives to save this colony. You sure there's nothing else in here that could help us out? Yeah, there's one more thing. I was gonna sell it after this was over, but you probably deserve it more than I do. Who's your contact at the spaceport, Cole? What's his name? He's not a bad guy. I don't want to get him in trouble. Besides, I'm not a snitch. He might have something to do with this whole attack, Cole. We need his name. It's important. Yeah, okay, you're right. His name's Powell. Works the docks at the spaceport, if he's still alive. Alright, so that was Powell, and I missed it. I could have asked him about this. I have to go. Oh, well. At least we got a new pistol. Let's see. Uh, pistol, pistol, pistol. Ooh, that's a good, that's a good pistol right there. All right, we'll equip that. And you know what? You know what? It's that radioactive. Minus 15 percent cool reduction. These rounds will stand for minuscule amounts of radioactive material, including low levels of radiation sickness and targets. Ah, it's not really worth it, I don't think. Um. Uh, and then, what was the combat upgrade for? Hang on, let me get my sniper rifle. Combat sensor. Sure, why not? Alright. Now, let's go. Chop, chop, guys. There's, uh... There's Geth to kill, or be killed by. Let's hope it's the former, not the latter. Ah! How dare you! you scared me! <laughs> no one here? Alright. Thought there'd be more. That'd be more than just two get, but whatever. Uh... Right, right, they're gonna want me to do, like, throw. Come on, buddy. Have to pop a shepherd. All right, you know what? Why don't you go there? See if we can draw him out. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Well done, Ash. Ash. Ashley. <laughs> the sniper rifle so much now. Is that you? Alright, fine. We'll use our teammates to draw him out again. There we go. 
Alright. Okay. Time to get this train moving. Set the charges. Destroy the entire colony. Leave no evidence that we were here. Get them bombs. Demolition charges. The Geth must have planted them. Hurry! We need to find them all and shut them down. So, uh, I should say or point out uh, what Shepard thought about the smuggler guys. She's not a fan of smugglers, but the severity of the crime depends on exactly what they were doing. They were smuggling in pistols and combat um, parts, which means that they're. That's so very disturbing. And had this been in a different time, she probably would have reported them. Because this isn't like smuggling food items. She's smuggling weapons. They're smuggling weapons, and that's dangerous. And needs to be addressed, right? But, bigger fish to fry and all that. I guess he had other ships that he could depart on. There we go. And just a brief reminder to my chat. Uh, you've all been very good at this so far, but you know, for those of you who have come in and didn't hear uh, this is a no spoilers run, so let's not talk about any future events as best we can. If our characters don't know about it, we don't know about it. Well, more or less. So from the current squad, Shepard's got PTSD from the Blitz. Ashley's probably going to get Eden Prime PTSD and Caden now has PTSD from Ashley. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty fair assessment. Uh, yeah, I think you can actually run out of combat now. It doesn't just, uh, change the, uh, camera angle. Which is very nice. We'll see you later on. 
to be sure. Let me take a look at equipment here. Is this a better sniper rifle? Uh, yeah, actually, it's not bad. So we'll do that. Yes, we'll move everything over. All right, armor. What's this about motorized joints? What does that do? Yeah, sure, why not? I'll have more powerful. Yes! Yes! Alright, so I'm about to show you guys, uh... I was gonna say Easter egg. It's not really an Easter egg, but it is something that a lot of people never know about on their playthroughs, and I'm really curious to see how they've improved it. It's a little cutscene that you trigger if you come here. Oh my god. It's like someone dropped a bomb. Oh wow. Death ship landed. They added buildings to it. That's really cool. So a lot of people have never seen that because they go straight to the beacon, right? Uh, they don't come over here, so they don't see that. Not only did they keep it in, but they added debris so it looked like oh, it looked like that ship landed on buildings. It used to just be a steaming lava pit, basically. Um I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Alright, we've looted the place. Let's continue the story. Normandy, the beacon is secure. This is amazing. Actual working Prothean technology. Unbelievable. It wasn't doing anything like that when they dug it up. Something must have activated it. Roger, Normandy. Standing by. Mama Shepard, save! Mama Shepard, save! Bad child, go away. Mama Shepard, do this. <laughs> Shepard! No, don't touch it. It's too Ouchie. I got a Distinguished Service Medal. <clears throat> we identified the ship that touched down on Eden Prime. The Normandy. A human alliance vessel. It was under the command of Captain Anderson. They managed to save the colony. And the beacon. One of the humans may have used it. Doctor? Dr. Chakwas. I think she's waking up. You had us worried there, Shepard. How are you feeling? 
Minor throbbing. Nothing serious. How long was I out? About 15 hours. Something happened down there with the beacon, I think. It's my fault. I must have triggered some kind of security field when I approached it. You had to push me out of the way. God, the game looks so good. So happy. You had no way to know what would happen. Actually, we don't even know if that's what set it off. Unfortunately, we'll never get the chance to find out. The beacon exploded. A system overload, maybe. And the blast knocked you cold. Williams and I had to carry you back here to the ship. I appreciate it. Physically, you're fine. But I detected some unusual brain activity. Abnormal beta waves. I also noticed an increase in your rapid eye movement. Signs typically associated with intense dreaming. So, this is an important thing. Um, <clears throat> to explain what Shepard was feeling. When Shepard was... When Caden tells her that they uh, had to carry Shepard back to the ship, her instinctual reaction is to say, Thank you, I appreciate it. But she feels disappointed, and she's not quite sure why. We know why. And deep down inside, she knows why. But um, it's a little confusing. It's one of those things where it's like, no, thank you for bringing me back. I I guess. I don't know why I don't feel good about that. But yeah, that is a thing. I saw... I'm not sure what I saw. Death, destruction, nothing's really clear. Hmm. I better add this to my report. It may... Oh. Captain Anderson. How's our XO holding up, Doctor? Well, all the readings look normal. I'd say the commander's going to be fine. Glad to hear it. Shepard, I need to speak with you. In private. Aye, aye, Captain. I'll be in the mess if you need me. Sounds like that beacon hit you pretty hard, Commander. Are you sure you're okay? So, Anderson is someone she feels like she can open up to. Anderson and her mother, right now, at this point in time, are the only two people she really opens up to. And her mom... I mean, she's a little guarded against her mom. She actually, at this point in time, would open up to Anderson more than her mom, which is a shame, but it is what it is. Uh... I don't like soldiers dying under my command. Jenkins wasn't your fault. You did a good job, Shepard. Did we leave Gunnery Chief Williams back on Eden Prime? I figured we could use a soldier like her. She's been reassigned to the Normandy. Williams is a good soldier. She deserves it. Lieutenant Elenko agrees with you. That's why I added her to our crew. All right, um, I'm not gonna choose this option because what she says makes zero sense. She's like, Intel dropped the ball. It's like, what do you mean the Intel dropped the ball? No one expected the Geth could be there. Don't be ridiculous. You said you needed to see me in private, Captain? I won't lie to you, Shepard. Things look bad. Nihilus is dead. The beacon was destroyed and Geth are invading. The Council's going to want answers. The Geth would have wiped out the whole colony if I hadn't stopped them. I'll stand behind you and your report, Shepard. You're a damned hero in my books. That's not why I'm here. It's Saren, that other Turian. Saren's a specter, one of the best, a living legend. But if he's working with the Geth, it means he's gone rogue. A rogue specter's trouble. Saren's dangerous, and he hates humans. Why? He thinks we're growing too fast, taking over the galaxy. A lot of aliens think that way. Most of them don't do anything about it. But Saren has allied himself with the Geth. I don't know how. I don't know why. I only know it had something to do with that beacon. You were there just before that beacon self-destructed. Did you see anything? Any clue that might tell us what Saren was after? Hmm. So, oh, hi there. <laughs> hi. Uh, Alita is redeeming 100 squiggly points. <laughs> For, uh... Puppy affection. Hi. How's it going? Mm -hmm. 
That's what I'm gonna say. Anytime Alita comes up and puts her 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 chin on my leg, that's her redeeming point. So, uh, I'd say Shepard would be unsure about all this. She wouldn't be so confident. Just before I lost consciousness, I had some kind of vision. A vision. A vision of what? I think Shepard, uh, unknowingly being obsessed with death. I saw synthetics. Geth, maybe. Slaughtering people. Butchering them. We need to report this to the Council, Shepard. What are we going to tell them? I had a bad dream? We don't know what information was stored in that beacon. Lost Prothean technology? Blueprints for some ancient weapon of mass destruction? Whatever it was. Saren took it. But I know Saren. I know his reputation is politics. He believes humans are a blight on the galaxy. This attack was an act of war. He has the secrets from the beacon. He has an army of Geth at his command, and he won't stop until he's wiped humanity from the face of the galaxy. I'll find some way to take him down. It's not that easy. He's a specter. He can go anywhere, do almost anything. That's why we need the Council on our side. No, 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 you don't understand. This is Shepard we're talking about. Saren is an enemy now. Saren is going down. Today, tomorrow, a month from now, it gonna happen. We prove Saren's gone rogue, and the Council will revoke his Spectre status. I'll contact the Ambassador, and see if he can get us an audience with the Council. He'll want to see us as soon as we reach the Citadel. We should be getting close. Head up to the bridge and tell Joker to bring us into dock. So, <clears throat> this might be a good moment to talk a bit about Shepard as well. Um... As stated with the backstory, uh, and you know what, I'll, I'll dig a little bit into uh, the reason for it in the backstory. I wanted to come up with a reason to kind of fit the gameplay. Shepard's like kind and caring and compassionate, and yet, like, in every game level we'll mow down 30 enemies and not even, you know, lose a wink of sleep that night. So uh, Shepard has developed this extreme sense of dehumanization. Well. <laughs> aliens and all that but where if you become an enemy you are now uh, an obstacle a threat you are not a real person so much to her and she will do whatever it takes to remove you be shoot you beat you into submission take you down she has no reserves um, anyone that she sees is not a threat uh, innocent civilian friend she even almost hyperhumanizes them, humanizes them, right? In the sense that uh, they must be protected. And if she fails, she takes it very hard. Uh, and when it comes to enemies, like Saren is now an enemy. He has proven that he is an enemy, he is a threat, she will take him down. Shepard, uh, before this started in her backstory, uh, did everything from leading assaults on drug rings or drug cartels and all that to actually deconstructing and tearing apart drug rings. Uh, and she would do it through slow, methodical, deliberate actions. She's not just a creature of violence. When it comes to her enemies, she will take you down. If that means taking a gun and going in guns blazing, she'll do it. If it means a more subtle approach and working things against each other and taking time to destroy something, she'll do that. She's a, not opposed to anything in that regard, and she can be somewhat ruthless in it because she doesn't see you as a person. Um, and the advantage to this too is she doesn't get dissuaded easily. If she's trying to go after something and an obstacle pops up in her way, okay. Fine, another obstacle's there. We'll overcome it, and we'll continue. That's generally her mentality. Again, I want to stress, not exactly the healthiest mentality to have, but it is our Shepherd's mentality. Glad to see you're okay, Commander. Commander, I'm glad to see you're okay. Losing Jenkins was hard on the crew, and I'm glad we didn't lose you, too. Things were pretty rough down there. Yeah, you never get used to seeing dead civilians. 
Doesn't seem right somehow. But at least you stopped Saren from wiping out the whole colony. I couldn't have done it without you. We're Marines. We stick together. And I'm just sorry that we lost Jenkins. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I could have done something to save him. I was there. You did everything right. It was just bad luck. It's been a hell of a shakedown, Cruz. Our first mission ends with one Spectre killing another. The Citadel Council's not gonna be happy about that. Probably use it to lever more concessions out of the Alliance. Hang on, I'm reading the chat. Uh, I think my favorite depiction of how a protagonist is okay with killing a bunch is near where Yoko Taro basically said, you don't have to be crazy to kill a bunch of people. You just have to think you're right. That's not true. That's not true, though. I think I'm right about tons of things. I still don't think I'm okay killing the people that are wrong. It takes a, an extreme amount of disassociation to be able to murder, because that is what it is, murder tons of people. Right, wrong, whatever. And I'm not talking about just killing them. I'm talking about killing them and being able to go to sleep that night, right? Someone goes into your home and they threaten your family and you have to shoot them and put them down. Okay, great. But for the average person, that's probably going to affect you. Probably mean some therapy or at the very least give you uh, a couple of troubled nights because that's not a thing most humans do. But for Shepard or anyone to go in there and take down a dozen people and walk in and sleep soundly, uh, it takes the ability to dehumanize your opponents. It's not just believing you're right. Um, let's see. You've got a good grasp of the situation. You a career man? Yeah, a lot of biotics are. We're not restricted, but we sure don't go undocumented. May as well get a paycheck for it. Besides, my father served. I made him proud when I enlisted. Eventually. But is that why you're here? Because of your family? Ah ha 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 ha! Something like that. Yeah, something bad. Something something. Father dead. Something something. Dark side. I was a regular Navy brat. I got a little more noteworthy than the folks expected. Oh, that's right. The Blitz. Imagine that bought you any post in the fleet. Word is we're heading for the Citadel, ma'am. Can you, uh, tell me why? Alright, that one's Shepard's fault. She kind of brought it up without thinking about it. Don't really blame Caden for that. She literally let, let, you know, she put the ball out there and he hit it. So. Uh, Shepard's also not big on hiding orders from her crew unless it's necessary. There are some times where you can't tell the crew what's happening for whatever reason, but like in moments like this, why not tell him what's going on? The captain hopes the ambassador can get an audience with the council. Tell them what Saren's been up to. Makes sense. They'd probably like to know he's not working for them anymore. Whatever happens, we'll be ready, Commander. Alright, nice. Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? Uh, not right now, because I'll talk about, talk to her about those later. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. I'm going with Femship fit your vision more than male ship. Can I ask how so? Like, was so the voice actress something else? Um, I can't answer all that, because uh, it'll all be revealed in time. When creating the backstory for Shepard and what I think and what I plan to have her go through and all that, I, um, I thought about the whole trilogy. And, uh, I can say that I think, so I love male Shep, and if I was just doing a playthrough on my own, which I, I probably will be doing by the way, um, I would play male Shepard, um, because that's just what I identify with the most. But right now I'm trying to tell a story, and the story I want to tell I think fits better with Femme Shep. And what I can tell you is that I think the voice actress fits this better because Jennifer Hale and Mark Muir are both wonderful voice actors and actresses. Um, uh, however, the delivery is slightly different. I think that Mark hits um, the Paragon a bit better. Something about his compassionate nature seems to come out more in Male Shep than in Femme Shep. However, Jennifer Hale has that subtle underlying aggression 
and danger to her presentation. She makes a really good renegade. When she wants to be threatening, she can. And even when she is being kind, there's that tone of harshness to it underneath that I think fits the shepherd better. Um, uh, Mark can do some of the comedic lines better, yes. Uh, it just depends. I think they're both really, really good. I'm glad you're okay, Commander. The crew could use some good news after what happened to Jenkins. Jenkins was a valuable part of this crew. Part of me feels guilty over what happened. If Jenkins was still alive, I might not be here. You're a good soldier, Williams. You belong on the Normandy. Thanks, Commander. That means a lot from you. I've never met anyone who was awarded the Star of Terra. Please, no. Why does everyone... And this, this is what Shepard deals with. <laughs> Everyone brings it up. Oh, your shepherd? Oh my god, from the Skillian Blitz. Oh, you've got the Star of Terra. It's like every time she meets someone, someone's bringing it up. Because, and to be fair, let's be fair to people, right? If you were to meet Keanu Reeves, the first thing you would do is talk about, oh my god, I loved you in the Matrix. Or, oh my god, I love John Wick, right? You talk about what made them famous. It's what everyone does. It just so happens in this case, it's very dramatic for her. <laughs> uh... Things were pretty rough down there. Are you okay? I've seen friends die before. It comes with being a Marine. But to see my whole unit wiped out, and you never get used to seeing dead civilians. But things would have been a lot worse if you hadn't have shown up. We couldn't have done it without you, Williams. Thanks, Commander. I have to admit, I was a little worried about being assigned to the Normandy. It's nice when someone makes you feel welcome. I think you're gonna fit in here just fine, Williams. Thanks, Commander. So, this is, uh, Mama Shepard's side coming out. This is her crew, she takes care. E okay. Mama Shepard protect. <laughs> What's going on here? Nothing? All right, good. <laughs> Let's go to Captain Anderson's quarters and talk to him a bit. Go speak to Joker when you're ready. Tell him to bring the Normandy into oh, dock. Oh, fine. Hello, chat and everyone. How are you guys doing? We've got a lot of people here. Hello, 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 everyone. Feel free to redeem your squeakalies for whatever you see fit. I'd salute him back, but I can't. I'm glad you're okay, Commander. Losing Jenkins was hard enough on What? Don't you tell me I can't do things. Game. No, yeah. that That's not for me. Alright. We will be reading codex entries. Uh, probably not our first session. Just because, you know, everyone wants to get into the story, right? Alright, here we go. Good timing, Commander. I was just about to bring us into the Citadel. See that taxpayer money at work. Citadel fleet. Well, size isn't everything. Why so touchy, Joker? I'm just saying you need firepower, too. Look at that monster. Its main gun could rip through the barriers in any ship in the Alliance fleet. Good thing it's on our side, then. Citadel Control, this is SSV Normandy, requesting permission to land. Stand by for clearance, Normandy. Clearance granted. You may begin your approach. Transferring you to an Alliance operator. 
Roger, Alliance Tower, Normandy out. Normandy, this is Alliance Tower. Please proceed to dock 422. This is an outrage! The Council would step in if the Geth attacked a Turian colony? The Turians don't found colonies on the borders of the Terminus systems, Ambassador. Humanity was well aware of the risks when you went into the Traverse. What about Saren? You can't just ignore a rogue specter. I demand action! You don't get to make demands of the Council, Ambassador. Citadel Security is investigating your charges against Saren. We will discuss the CSEC findings at the hearing, not before. Captain Anderson, I see you brought half your crew with you. Just the ground team from Eden Prime, in case you had any questions. I have the mission reports. I assume they're accurate? They are. Sounds like you convinced the Council to give us an audience. They were not happy about it. Seren's their top agent. They don't like him being accused of treason. Saren's a threat to every human colony out there. If they don't stop him, I will. Settle down, Commander. You've already done more than enough to jeopardize your candidacy for the Spectres. The mission on Eden Prime was a chance to prove you could get the job done. Instead, Nihilus ended up dead and the beacon was destroyed. That's Saren's fault, not hers. Then we better hope the CSEC investigation turns up evidence to support our accusations. Otherwise, the Council might use this as an excuse to keep you out of the Spectres. Come with me, Captain. I want to go over a few things before the hearing. Shepard, you and the others can meet us at the Citadel Tower, top level. I'll make sure you have clearance to get in. And that's why I hate politicians. Uh, yes. Shep has, uh, green eyes. There you go. Yes, she is. Um. Alright. Holster your sidearms, soldier. Um. <clears throat> so, I love that response for our shepherd, for Jaden. <laughs> he's, a, he's a threat to everyone. I'm going to take him down. Hold your horses, shepherd. No, I don't think you understood. I am going to take... Like, shepherd has made Saren an enemy. He's proven that he's an enemy. He's hurt... Eden Prime, and Shepard's going to take him down. She wouldn't go AWOL. She wouldn't go that far. But now that he is in her sights, now that she, he is on the top of her shit list, well, let's say number two on her shit list, this organization called Cerberus would still be at the top because they murdered her father. But, you know, that's kind of like in the background. She doesn't have any leads on them. She doesn't know how to find them. So, so that aside... Saren is now at the top of her shit list, and she would ask for assignments, she would ask for transfers, she would do everything she can to ensure she is in a place to take this mofo down. Until he's taken down. So, so, oh, I can't talk about spoilers much. So let's just say that Shepard is dedicated to taking Saren down long before ever given real permission to do so. And that's just how she is. She's also not the best at forgiveness. <laughs> it takes a lot to get her to forgive you for something. Captain Hendrickson reported some unusual energy readings during a patrol in the Argus Row cluster. She had particular concerns about the Hydra system, but was recalled before her team could investigate further. No patrols are scheduled for that sector. Do you want to send a recon team? Ooh, that's good to know. Good to know, good to know, good to know, good to know. Allegations are very serious. I can This is serious. My reputation is at stake. I spoke with the consul in confidence and her alone, and she betrayed that confidence. All right. I will look into it for you. In the meantime, do not do anything rash. 
I like the Elcor look. They look good. I like it. Hello there, human. Sincere apology, but I am here on business and cannot be distracted right now. You seem distressed. Is there something I can do to help? Alarmed response. You overheard that, did you? This is all going so wrong. And it is the Asari consort's fault. She's the one who started all this. What did this Asari do to get you so upset? I cannot speak more about this problem. It is too sensitive. Suffice it to say, she has compromised my authority as a diplomat. Where can I find the Sasari consort? She is across the bridge from here. Her offices are easy enough to spot. Good day, human. Pleased greeting. Human, it is always good to see your kind. I am Ambassador Kalen. Hi, Genuine Kaylin. query. Is there something I can do for you this day? Why do you explain what you're about to say? Our people communicate less through words and more through scent and slight movements. Plainly, we discovered our vocal expression was not enough to convey the feelings of our conversations to other species. Why do you bother, Kaelin? These Earth Clan don't really care about our ways. Remorseful response, Din. You don't truly believe that. And if you do, I am very sorry for you. <laughs> it's a weird thing to just go up and ask someone, Hey, how come you talk like this? But I mean, the players need to understand, so that's what our shepherd does. Oh, what's that? What happened? You cheered. Oh! Thank you for cheering for me. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not used to all this. Tell me more about your species. Genuine enthusiasm. I delight in telling the history of my people. It is agreeable to share our culture with others. Yes, share, share. Tell me about the history and origins of the Elcor. The Elcor were just beginning to explore Council space when the Asari first made contact with us. With their help, we discovered the relay closest to our system, and from there the Citadel. Proudly, within one lifetime we established a regular route to the Citadel, and quickly became one of the more active species living on this great station. I'd like to know more about the culture of the Elcor. Frankly, we Elcor prefer the safety and familiarity of our own colonies to the confines of space travel. Our society is built on small, tight-knit groups, though we are always welcoming to outsiders. Our government tends to be very stable. Our people are not very comfortable with sudden changes. I mean, that makes sense. They're very slow-moving, so the society is also very slow-moving. It fits. Um, I'm not sure how happy I am about the fleshy tone they have now. Like, their skin is less gray and it's more fleshy. I'll get used to it. It's definitely a design choice. What do you do here? Modestly. I work to bring the problems and the requests of the Elcor groups to the attention of the Council. Ha! They only give us these positions to keep us quiet. The Council doesn't care about our races. Chastising rebuke. Your tone is inappropriate, Din. This human is not to blame for your malcontent or your misconceived suspicions. You tell him. Alright. Goodbye, Ambassador. Sincere farewell. Good day to you, human. Enjoy your time on the Citadel. By the way, if anyone in chat can think of a good stat to keep track of for Mass Effect 1, I have a couple for 2 and 3. But other than total deaths, I don't really know a good stat to keep track of. Because it has to be a stat that I have control over. Like, so it's not just the number of times that I, you know, do a Paragon option or something. That's not really viable. It has to be something I do or don't do or forget to do or, 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 or something along those lines. Um, 
Uh, and if you can think of a good one, uh, I'll put it on the uh, statistic counter, because all I have right now is my total deaths. Um, yeah. We bring up the PTSD counter. No, well, maybe. <laughs> no, because that's not really something I have control over. That's just something that happens in the game, right? So I, wa I want the stats to track things that I, I do well or don't do well. Um, the number of times people bring up her PTSD. <laughs> Uh, uh, does Shepard have pre-existing exist options of the council? Uh, opinions of the council? Not really. They are a galactic government. She doesn't know much about them. They, they, they are in charge of the lives of billions, of trillions of people. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, Twy, that's not a bad idea. Twy likes to hiccup. Well, I don't know if like is the proper word. Twy hiccups a lot in her streams, and they have a tracker for that. Uh, do I have... I have to have something. I have, like, a tick or something that I do. Um, <clears throat> however, that would... Uh, if it happens too much, I'll be adjusting the stats all the time. Uh, but we'll see. Every time you gush about the graphics... Uh... <laughs> Um, maybe? I'll think about that one. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Let's talk to Din. Earth Clan, you are in the wrong place, I think. Your ambassador is next door in the large office. Chastising remark. Don't be so rude, Din. At least introduce yourself. <sighs> I am Din Korlak, Volus Ambassador. Is there something I can do for you, Earth Clan? Every time I get a name wrong. I mean, that'd be great for D&D. &D. It's not going to be very effective for Mass Effect, the game I've played, like, literally over a dozen times. Uh... How many times do you get sidetracked? Like, what do you mean by sidetracked? Like, how many times I go off on a rant? Maybe. Uh... What is this place? You are in the embassy for the Volus and the Elcor. Your ambassador is next door, in his own office. In this shared space, I aid my fellow Volus when I'm not being interrupted. All right. What is it you do here? I look out for the best interests of the Volus people. No easy task, considering how often we are overlooked by the Council. Chastising rebuke, Din. The Council favors your species greatly. You are naive. The Earth Clan will be invited to the Council long before our species will. Why aren't the Elcor or Volus part of the Council? All species must prove themselves before they join the Council. All but the Earth Clans, it would seem. Dismissive. Ignore the Volus Ambassador, human. He is incorrect in his assessment. Really? How long have we been waiting? How long do you think we'll continue to wait? Bah! This talk is wasted on the humans. You seem to have a bit of a chip on your shoulder, Din. You humans are new to the Citadel, and yet the Council has granted you great favor. <sighs> Chastising rebuke, Din. Your species has always been granted many concessions. Volus territory has expanded tenfold since coming to the Citadel. <laughs> Details. We still have no real say in the decisions that affect Citadel space. <laughs> I uh, I never noticed before that the that uh the Elcor up there had this little like before he started talking like this guy again. <laughs> I'd like to know more about the Volus. I'm sure our history and culture would bore you. 
Earth Clan. I love history. Actually, I would like to know more about your history. My people came to the Citadel shortly after the Asari and Salarians had discovered it. We were instrumental in establishing a standardized galactic economy. However, despite our long association with the Citadel and our many contributions to galactic society, we still do not hold a seat on the Council. Tell me about Volus culture. We are tribal by nature, but our ways are not violent. We barter and trade our lands and tribe members in order to increase status. Larger tribes often engulf smaller ones and eventually split again. Our society is very malleable, and our government is always shifting and changing. Since we're not physically adept, we trade our services for protection. All right. Goodbye, Ambassador. Yes, yes. Good day, ah. Earth Clan. Hey, Halo. Other Halo. I'm going to call you K-Halo. <laughs> um, I am enjoying it. I'm enjoying it immensely, actually. Very, very, very thoroughly enjoying it. Uh, every time I go off on a rant, I suppose. I can't tell the aliens from the animals. Um. Every time I go to check something out, no, not going to check something out. That's the whole point of the game. That's exploration, right? Maybe something along the lines of every time I go, all right, now listen, let me talk to you for a second. Something like that, maybe. I don't know, but that's so generic. It's hard to pin down. It's fine. We don't need to add more stats. Uh, and I know Mass Effect 2 has another really good one that I'm going to have. Uh, and if I think of one for one, I'll, I'll let you know. But it has to be something that's fun to track, you know? Good day, Commander. The human ambassador is up the stairs, first room on the right. You know who I am? Yes, I receive reports on all newly arrived dignitaries and notable people. What is this place? This is the Presidium. More specifically, you are at the Citadel Embassies. If you have more questions, please access Savina. What's that? Oh, Avina is the virtual guide for the Citadel. Feel free to access the terminal yourself. What's your name? What do you do here? My name is Sephiria. I'm the administrative assistant for the embassies. You seem to be distracted. The embassies are the hub of all Citadel politics. <laughs> when you represent trillions of citizens, it tends to get a little busy. Eh, fair enough. I should be going now. Have a pleasant day. Failed simping attempts in Mass Effect? Nah, not in this game. This isn't dot .hack where I'm playing Yeet 9000. I'm playing a, a serious character here who uh, will not be simping all over everyone. Uh, shrimping, shrimping. I'm supposed to say shrimping. Sorry, Twy. <laughs> That's my counter every time I forget <laughs> to say shrimping. Uh, no, so. Shepard won't be doing that. I you might. Delighted. Welcome. It is good to meet you. You guys already know that because I am playing a fem Shep, I can't romance my favorite romance, which, uh, which, uh, makes me sad. So I, as a player, will be gushing over Tally, but they'll just be sisters. I can't believe I landed a job here. This place is fantastic. I mean, wait, I'm not supposed to say that. That's spoiler. I found it, everyone. <laughs> I found the stat. <laughs> Every time I say something that's spoilerish, we'll keep track of it. And that'll hopefully remind me not to say things that are freaking spoilerish. <laughs> Hang on. I'm changing it now. Look at that, everyone. I, I did it to myself. Um, let's see. Properties. Total deaths. And then we'll do... 
accidental spoiler talk. It'd help if I spell things correctly. Uh, <laughs> Here. Let me do this. Accidental, let me capitalize the T. And one, we are at one. So now I need to adjust all this so that it all fits. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Nope. Hmm, that's too big. Oh, well I can change that here. There, how's that? Uh, sure. That'll work. And then this will just move down. So that's pretty much in the middle. There we go. Okay. <laughs> there. We have found another stat. <laughs> Accidental spoiler talk. Oh, man. Uh, Yuna, yes. I absolutely do have a plan in mind. So I'm going to be completely honest with all of you right now. I have a plan in mind for the whole trilogy. I have things set up, things that Shepard will say or do, conversations that I will be having with you guys where I will stop and explain what's going on here and why something's happening romance paths, decisions that will be made. I have thought about it all. I am intending to tell you all a story. To give you a different experience. To give you a reason to watch this as opposed to anyone else who is just kind of playing through the game. I am trying to give Shepard a character arc and everything. Which, she will have a character arc. So yes, I have thought about it all of it. Uh... Okay. Now that we have our stats, at least two of them. Commander Shepard, I didn't expect to see you here. Did Ambassador Udina send you? Have we met before? No, but I know you well enough. I'm Executor Palin, head of CSEC. It's my job to know when someone like you arrives on the Citadel. Was there something you needed, Commander? I get the feeling you're not too fond of humans. No, I just don't trust your kind. Not yet. Fair. You humans are eager to take all the power you can get, and you're being given a lot. If the Council wants to make humanity their new favorite pet, that's their business. But I don't have to like it. We're not favorites. Are we? Would Shepard know that? Ah, uh, maybe it's like an instinctual, defensive thing. The Council treats us like second-class citizens. We have to fight for everything we get. Good. Then fight for it. But don't expect the rest of us to just sit back and let you take it. I'm a busy man, Commander. Are we done here? What do you know about the Spectres? They're the right hand of the Council, or so they like to be called. More like the underhanded side of the Council. What do you have against the Spectres? I can't abide any organization that considers itself above the law, especially when it's left up to each individual specter to decide when and how to bend the rules. Um, that's a bit naive. Is it? Let me think for a second. What does Shepard think about the specters? Shepard... Shepard thinks that rules and regulations are there for a reason, and nine times out of ten, 99 times out of a hundred, you need to follow them. But sometimes, just sometimes, regulations get in the way. Because regulations can't account for every scenario in existence, and once in a while, you need to get things done, even if the rules say you shouldn't. Um, so I think she would say this. Sometimes you have to bend the law to keep people safe. 
I've been with CSEC for 30 years. I've never had to break the law to do my job, not once. Yeah, right. You expect us to believe none of your officers are corrupt? There are over 200,000 CSEC agents. Some of them are going to be bad. But we don't turn a blind eye to corruption like the Spectres do. We do our best to find and punish any officer who breaks the law. Spectres? <laughs> They'll never come under that kind of scrutiny. I, I get it. And Shepard gets it. She understands what he's saying. And she can believe, unlike Ashley, that he hasn't. And Shepard hasn't, right? For all her talk, Shepard has not broken an order yet. But she might need to someday. And she knows she might need to. And, you know, she thinks it's important that people can for the better good. She also realizes that's very dangerous, though, because it's like, um, it's like giving power to someone. If you give power to the right person, it's a good thing. Give power to a wrong person, it's a bad thing. And how do you choose, right? The galaxy needs people like that. People who do the dirty jobs. I agree. But they need to be held to a higher standard. They need to be accountable. Saren's out of control. We both know that. But because he's a specter, the council doesn't want to do anything about it. Is that the kind of person this galaxy needs? No, that is true. Shepard does feel that accountability should be taken. If you break the law or break the rules to get stuff done, you are still responsible and you still need to be held accountable. Um, so she does agree with him on that point. But not all specters are like Saren. True. But the potential is always there. All right, um... Tell me about CSEC. CSEC provides necessary police and security services throughout the Citadel. We're a civilian government agency, though many of our members have had military training. Of course, as the CSEC representative to the Council, I spend most of my time liaising between the two. Tell me about your investigation into Saren. Sorry, Commander. I don't make a habit of giving out details about ongoing investigations. Fair enough. I'll be going now. Goodbye, Commander. So, yeah, despite everything I just said, where she thinks that sometimes, sometimes, you break the laws, she does feel that you then have to face the music and be held accountable for it and let your actions be a judge. Now, what I mean by that, let me give an example. Let's say um, she breaks the rules for a good reason and she turns out to be right, right? Should she, like, go to jail for it? No, no, no. She thinks that people should understand that this was the right action to take, even if it was against the rules, and that should be, you know, she should be held accountable for that. But let's say she does what she does and she's wrong and people get hurt or die or not. Then, yes, she should go to jail. She is accountable for her actions. The Spectres aren't, and she can agree that that's a problem. Uh-oh. Got it. <laughs> Diplomatic advisory warning. The following message was transmitted from an untraceable account to multiple recipients across the extranet. Further monitoring of the situation is warranted. My fellow biotic, you have been selected to receive this transmission because of our shared plight. Few understand us. Few tolerate us. We must stand together. We must build our own new world. Come. Join us in the Hawkwing Ada Cluster. Only as one body can we right the wrongs done to our kind. Ooh, that's not creepy. And it has been a while since I saved, so thank you for reminding me I shall save. Let's go talk to the council. So there are tons and tons of side quests to do on the, count on the Citadel. I am going to get through the main story bits before I start doing tons of the side questy bits. Um, just because I wanna, I wanna, I wanna do the side quest once the main story stuff for the Citadel is done. I just feel like that'll flow better. 
Greetings, and welcome to the Presidium. My name is Avina, and I am pleased to be your virtual guide throughout this level of the Citadel Space Station. So are you a person or a program? I am a fully interactive virtual intelligence, programmed to provide spontaneous guidance at predetermined locations of interest throughout this level of the Citadel. I may also be contacted through any of the Presidium VI terminals, should you require assistance. Give me the tour. You are standing at Presidium Tourism Terminal 1. On either side of this lobby are the embassies of the various Citadel races, along with CSEC headquarters. On the far end of this level, you can see the Citadel Tower, where the Council meets regularly to discuss matters of interstellar importance. Mm -hmm. I want to know more about Citadel security. Citadel security serves as law enforcement for all regions of the Citadel though the majority of officers serve in the wards. Executor Palin, a Turian, is the current head of CSEC, but individuals from virtually every species across Citadel space serve as officers beneath him. If you wish to learn more, Executor Palin's office is located in the CSEC headquarters just across the lobby. Tell me about the embassies. Each species in Citadel space important enough to be consulted on matters of galactic politics maintains an embassy on the Presidium. The Volus were the first non-council species to be granted an embassy, roughly 2,384 galactic standard years ago. As Citadel space has expanded, more embassies have been added. The most recently added embassy belongs to your own species, humanity. It was added 19 galactic standard years ago, despite some rather vocal opposition. Why were people trying to keep my species out? Some species felt humanity was given preferential treatment. It often takes a century or more before a new species is granted an embassy. The Council gave a great deal of thought to this matter. In the end, they decided humanity's impact on Citadel space was significant enough to warrant an embassy. Do you agree with their decision? I am not programmed to make that kind of qualified judgment. My code is limited to information and simple interaction simulations. Alright. How come the Volus were the first species given an embassy? In the early years following the formation of the Council, the Volus were, apart from the Asari and Salarians, the most populous and widespread species in Citadel space. They established many new colonies and trading outposts and they petitioned the Council for a greater role in determining interstellar policy. In recognition of their work to expand interstellar trade and establish a standardized galactic economy, the Volus were granted an embassy here on the Citadel. Why weren't they made a Council race? The Council races have extensive responsibilities. They must provide personnel and ships for the Citadel fleets. They often provide economic aid in times of disaster. It would be unfair to demand such an enormous burden of a species unable to meet these obligations. The embassies allow lesser species to have a voice on the Citadel. That's pretty damn arrogant. I apologize if my personality has offended you. Please submit all formal complaints in writing to the Citadel Tourist and Visitor Board. So, she's like, how dare you say lesser? But again, Shepard, it's a robot. It doesn't know what it's doing. Um... Do you know anything about specters? The term specter is derived from the branch of special tactics and reconnaissance. Each specter agent is handpicked by the Council. Their primary role is preserving galactic stability and resolving volatile situations that cannot be handled through normal political channels. In this role, they are granted extraterritorial rights and jurisdictions. Spectres answer to no law or authority except the Council itself. Alright. What can you tell me about the Citadel Council? Originally, the Council consisted of representatives from the Asari and Salarians, the two dominant species in Citadel space. Roughly 1,304 galactic standard years ago, Turians were invited to join the Council in recognition of the role they played during the Krogan Rebellion. Since then, the three Council races have worked together to ensure the peaceful coexistence of the galactic community, while preserving individual autonomy for each species. It can't be as simple as that. There must be problems somewhere in the system. 
I am not programmed to make that kind of qualified judgment. My code is limited to information and simple interaction simulations. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye, and thank you for using Avena. Please enjoy your visit to the Citadel. Okay. Um, how much longer am I going to go tonight? Uh, not too much longer. I'm going to get to a certain point, and then I'm going to stop. Um, yes, rapid transit. That's fine. I just want to take a look at the Citadel real quick. It looks very nice. Very pretty. Like, this is less impressive to me because it's, 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 what's the word? It's very pretty, don't get me wrong, but like, well, I guess it is a lot better than it was. Like, this is really nice. I, I don't mean to suggest that it's not. It's very nice, especially the Krogan statue. And the little mists that are coming from the water spouts. Uh, so yeah, uh, I, I, when I stream is going to change kind of week to week, I'll have schedules up in Discord. Um, I think my next time streaming this game will be Friday. Uh, on, on average, on general, I think it's going to be like Tuesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, and the times are going to vary. Uh, I can't do it this Tuesday, um, because I, I got busy, I'm busy, got things to do. Um, but, uh... I'll, I'll, like I said, if you're curious, and I'll only stream these during scheduled times, because I have unscheduled streams too, but I'm not going to play this playthrough um, during those unscheduled streams. I might do other things, perhaps. Um, but uh, join my Discord and take a look at my schedule that will be on Discord soon uh, for an idea of when to catch these. That's the ward. I don't want to go to the ward. I want to go to the Citadel Embassy. I'm going the wrong way. Is that actually going faster? Yeah, it is. And I'm getting tired. Nice. Excuse me. You know what? Let's just quick travel to the embassies. I mean, to the, the Citadel Tower. Ooh, that's not ominous at all. Saren's hiding something. Give me more time. Stall them. Stall the council? Don't be ridiculous. Your investigation is over, Garrus. Commander Shepard, Garrus Vicarian. I was the officer in charge of the CSEC investigation into Saren. Come across anything I should know about? Saren's a specter. Most of his activities are classified. I couldn't find anything solid. But I know he's up to something. Like you humans say, I feel it in my gut. I think the council's ready for us, Commander. Good luck, Shepard. Maybe they'll listen to you. Okay, thank you. That was a good lad. Very pretty, very nice. I like it. I like it. All right. I'm gonna go talk to all these people later. The hearing's already started. Come on. The Geth attack is a matter of some concern, but there is nothing to indicate Saren was involved in any way. The investigation by Citadel Security turned up no evidence to support your charge of treason. An eyewitness saw him kill Nihilus in cold blood. We've read the Eden Prime reports, Ambassador. The testimony of one traumatized dock worker is hardly compelling proof. I resent these accusations. Nihilus was a fellow Spectre and a friend. That just let you catch him off guard. Captain Anderson. You always seem to be involved when humanity makes false charges against me. And this must be your protege, Commander Shepard. The 
one who let the beacon get destroyed. Hmm. Shepard's not going to start throwing insults. She's too clever for that. The mission to Eden Prime was top secret. The only way you could know about the beacon was if you were there. With Nihilus gone, his files passed on to me. I read the Eden Prime report. I was unimpressed. But what can you expect from a human? Saren despises humanity. That's why he attacked Eden Prime. Your species needs to learn its place, Shepard. You're not ready to join the Council. You're not even ready to join the Spectres. He has no right to say that. That's not his decision. Shepard's admission into the Spectres is not the purpose of this meeting. This meeting has no purpose. The humans are wasting your time, Counselor. And mine. Hmm, she might do that. You can't hide behind the Council forever. There is still one yeah, outstanding she'd issue. Say that. Commander Shepard's vision. It may have been triggered Ooh, by the beacon. Anderson. Are we allowing dreams into evidence now? How can I defend my innocence against this kind of testimony? I agree. Our judgment must be based on facts and evidence, not wild imaginings and reckless speculation. Even Shepard would Do agree. Do you have anything that. else to add? Commander like Shepard's Shepherd. like Anderson, no. Uh no. She's not going to insult the council. She's not frustrated. This is like I was saying earlier. This is an obstacle that has popped up. It's fine. We'll retreat, we'll reassess, and we'll attack it from a different angle, but we will take him down. That's her mentality. Because, I mean, in her career, problems pro crop up all the time. Nothing's ever as easy as you wish it was. So don't get frustrated at the obstacles. Work around them. You've made your decision. I won't waste my breath. That is not what she would have said, but, you know, it's what she said. The Council has found no evidence of any connection between Saren and the Geth. Ambassador, your petition to have him disbarred from the Spectres is denied. I'm glad to see justice was served. This meeting is adjourned. Who's a shadow, Dina? Who's a Dina? You are! It was a mistake bringing you into that hearing, Captain. You and Saren have too much history. It made the Council question our motives. I know Saren. He's working with the Geth for one reason. To exterminate the entire human race. Every colony we have is at risk. Every world we control is in danger. Even Earth isn't safe. Alright, hang on. Gotta check something. What the... Oh my god! Hang on, guys. I gotta show you something. Uh, give me a second. I'm gonna... I'm gonna put this over here. Uh, Eldridge, my roommate, just, uh, drew something at the start of the stream, or during the stream. Uh, boy, hang on. Um, let me do this and show that. Look! Oh, it's wonderful! Jaden Shepherd with Daddy's dog tags. <laughs> oh, 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 thank you, Eldridge. Oh, so good. Oh man! All right, all right, all right, all right. Ah, uh, where was I? Uh, the council won't help us? No. Uh, I think that Jaden understands the council's position. They're a little frustrating, maybe, but we don't have any evidence that Saren was involved in any of this except for the testimony of a traumatized dock worker. Enough for us to believe? Sure. Um, well, hang on. Do we have any other evidence than that? No. But while it might be enough for Shepard to believe, it's not enough for a council to make such sweeping decisions. And that's fine. That's great. We'll take care of it. We'll get that evidence. Tell me about this history between you and Saren. I worked with him on a mission a long time ago. Things went bad. 
Real bad. We shouldn't talk about this here. But I know what he's like. And he has to be stopped. Oh my god. Eldritch, yes, please. I'm gonna put that on my sweatshirt. I'm gonna make a um I'll make a, a V-Roid avatar uh with that. And that's what I'll wear when we play this game. <laughs> it's gonna be great. Um What's our next step? As a specter, he's virtually untouchable. We need to find some way to expose him. What about Garrus, that CSEC investigator? We saw him arguing with the executor. That's right. He was asking for more time to finish his report. Seems like he was close to finding something on Saren. Any idea where we could find him? I have a contact in CSEC who can help us track Garrus down. His name is Harkin. Forget it. They suspended Harkin last month, drinking on the job. I won't waste my time with that loser. You won't have to. I don't want the Council using your past history with Saren as an excuse to ignore anything we turn up. Shepard will handle this. Hey, hey, hey! Don't talk to my surrogate father like that. You can't just cut Captain Anderson out of this investigation. The Ambassador's right. I need to step aside. I need to take care of some business. Captain, meet me in my office later. Harkin's probably getting drunk at Cora's Den. It's a dingy little club in the lower section of the wards. Maybe there's another way to find evidence against Saren. You should talk to Barla Vaughn over in the financial district. Rumor has it he's an agent for the Shadow Broker. The Shadow Broker? An information dealer. Buys and sells secrets to the highest bidder. I've heard Barla Vaughn's one of the top representatives. He might know something about Saren, but his information won't come cheap. You and Saren have a history. What happened? About 20 years ago, I was part of a mission in the Skillian Verge. I was working with Saren to find and remove a known terrorist threat. Saren eliminated his target, but a lot of people died along the way. Innocent people. And the official records just covered it all up. But I saw how he operates. No conscience. No hesitation. He'd kill a thousand innocent civilians to end a war without a second thought. Uh, yeah, from Shepard's perspective, that's monstrous. Like, she understands that sometimes things need to happen, but she would never allow herself to uh, say that it would be necessary. Um, or at least uh, that would be done as a last resort at all costs. Killing innocents doesn't end wars. It causes them. I know how the world works, Commander. Sometimes you're forced to make unpleasant decisions. But only if there's no other way. Saren doesn't even look for another option. He's twisted, broken. He likes the violence, the killing. And he knows how to cover his tracks. Our ambassador doesn't seem to get along with the Council. He's just frustrated. The Council's always preaching that we need to be part of the galactic community. But for them, it's a one-way street. They want us to expand and settle unstable regions like the Skillian Verge and the Attican Traverse. But when we run into trouble, they don't want to help us out. Everyone knows it's only a matter of time until we get a seat on the Council. The Ambassador just thinks it should happen sooner rather than later. And I agree. I want to know more about the Spectres. They're not your typical government agency. They tend to work alone, behind the scenes. They take care of problems the Council can't. It's not easy preserving peace across an entire galaxy. The Council prefers to use diplomacy and negotiation. But sometimes more extreme measures are needed. How do they decide who becomes a Spectre? You can't just apply to join. There's no training program. Spectres aren't made. They're born. The Council's always looking for exceptional individuals. People who can get the job done. Like you. They've been watching you for years. They see something in you. They want you on their side. Nihilus was supposed to give them a final recommendation. But with him gone, things are still up in the air. What's their command structure like? There is no command structure. Each Spectre answers directly to the Council. Sometimes they're sent on specific missions. Other times, they act on their own. They tend to operate outside the law. 
do whatever it takes to accomplish their goals. The Council just turns a blind eye. Spectres have a lot of power, Shepard. What happens when a Spectre goes rogue, like Saren? It doesn't happen often. The Council is careful when they select their candidates. But when something does go wrong, there's usually only one solution. Send another Spectre to bring the rogue agent down. Mm -hmm. They sound like shadow operatives. Everything about them is classified. We don't even know how many there are. The latest Alliance estimate puts their numbers under a hundred. But the Council couldn't do its job without them. They're the Citadel's top agents. The last line of defense. The final option before open war. The entire galaxy respects and fears them. If a Spectre shows up, you know something big is about to happen. All right. I should go. Good luck, Shepard. I'll be over in the Ambassador's office if you need anything else. Already. So, ooh, I leveled up. Uh, while I level up, we'll talk. So I'm about to end here. Uh, next, next time, we'll do the Citadel stuff. We're going to be on the Citadel for several hours. Uh, there's lots of side quests to do. There's the main quest. I want to get the main quest done before I dig too deep into the side quest for reasons that I will explain when we get there. Um, let's, let's do our, um, I really kind of like to get my, uh, medium armor. That'd be nice. Mm. All right, all right. We'll unlock snipper rifles. We'll do two there and one there. All right. Uh, for you, let's boost up that decryption. One, and then we'll do electronics and first aid. Ash, we know what we're doing with you, don't we? Tanky tank, 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 tank. All right. Um, so, we go ahead and save. Uh, my next stream will most likely, and check the Discord to see if this changes, most likely be Friday around 7 central time. I'm sorry, uh, uh, that central time, mountain time. Seven mountain time. Um, but yeah, I'll get a schedule up on Discord. So everyone, thanks for joining. I'm so ecstatic that so many of you are here and that you've talked with me and been interactive. This is what I really want. I want to have a conversation with you guys during this adventure. For those of you who are watching this on YouTube uh, a few days from now, um, leave questions in the comments below and I will be sure to chat with you there as well. I'm super excited. I hope you're excited. Um, and until next time, everyone, uh, make sure that your tragedies don't cause you to sink, but are a foundation upon which you can soar through the stars, or something cheesy like that. Bye-bye, everyone! Bye-bye!